Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is the second uh, in the series of creating this uh, sort of elastic menu. <clears throat> what exactly is happening is that, well, you, you click on a, a button over here and it kind of creates this uh, elasticity menu that looks pretty cool. What we're doing is not actually exactly this. We're going to use mouse interaction to sort of drag out this menu and that's what we're going to do in this lesson. So if you remember in the previous previous lesson, if you haven't watched that tutorial, uh, please go ahead and do. It's actually one tutorial before this one. Uh, we created this path uh, using SVG and I talked about all sort of things about how to how to you know, start the path, how to create line, and how to create a curve. And the matter of fact is that this curve thingy, this number actually represents that curve. So if I set it to zero, we're gonna have like a direct or a straight line over here. And if you just change this to 20 or maybe 30, you know, and 40, it's gonna just expand. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna just add that interactivity in JavaScript, right? So I'm gonna set it to zero, and then going back to uh, JavaScript, I'm gonna click on this gear icon, and uh, well, the jQuery is already added, I added it, but you can go ahead and create and just choose jQuery over here and save it. And for those of you who doesn't know what jQuery is, it's basically a library that lets you easily uh, write uh, JavaScript code to, to be uh, to be able to interact with your uh, elements in the HTML, right? So if you take a look at the HTML, we have this SVG and then we have this path, which represents this, and I just added a class menu, right? And in JavaScript, having jQuery added, I'm gonna use a dollar sign, document.ready, and then I pass a function to it, right? What it, what it really means is that when my document is ready, when, when everything is loaded in my HTML page, now I want to do this stuff that I write inside the function that I pass to the ready function uh, here. So first things first, I'm gonna select the menu itself. So I'm gonna define a variable called menu, and then I'll use jQuery selector, and then dot menu, here, uh, this way I basically select this path over here with the class menu, right? Going back to JavaScript, and then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna say dollar sign document dot on. So basically what I really wanna do is that I'm gonna just click somewhere in the menu and then drag it out, right? So there are two events happening here. One event is just clicking down the mouse, right, and then moving the mouse right to the right or left right to kind of <clears throat> let let this menu come out or go down uh, go in right so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use on function in JavaScript to, to add those event listeners and one event is obviously but as I said is clicking down and then dragging which is a mouse move right so mouse down and mouse move so I'm gonna say document on the first argument is mouse down and then I want to say not when I click on the menu itself right when I'm on the area of the menu and then I click mouse down so if I click the mouse uh, then I want this to uh, start operating right I don't want to like do it when I'm here or here or here whenever I'm here so then the, the second parameter uh, for the on function is which element I want this mouse down to actually activate. So I'm gonna say menu, because that's the class that I gave to the menu, right? And then I'm gonna pass it as a third argument parameter. I pass it a function, and then that function has this argument e, <clears throat> which says, which, which talks about the event. So all the properties that that event, and by event I mean mouse down, right, has. So what I'm gonna do, it, is basically create a new variable here called start x because I'm moving in the x direction, right? Start x equals to e dot page x, 
right? So basically on mouse down, when I'm on the menu, when I click, not let it go, but I click, I store the uh, X position of where I clicked, right, in the start X variable. As easy as that. And then obviously the next thing that comes is mouse move. So I create another event handler here. I say document dot on and then I say mouse move right and the second parameter I just pass it a function again passing e as the argument here and then here I define end x or or like current x right equals to e dot page x so this e here is connected to this one which is the mouse move event and this e is connected to mouse down so there are two different things right so then again what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a diff variable and then I say current x minus start x right because I want to know how much I basically moved my mouse from the starting position when I clicked right so I click and then I move the mouse right so basically this diff variable which is current x wherever I am here from the starting position shows how much I kind of dragged this right so what I want to actually do is that I want to then having that variable I want to change this zero after the a tag I want to change that to this variable so that it shows the curve right so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna say again using JavaScript uh, jQuery I'm gonna say well I, I already created the menu selector and put it in the menu so what I'm gonna do is that menu dot attribute because in the HTML if you notice this D is an attribute to the path or my menu right so what I'm gonna do is that menu attribute D because that's what I want to change and then I need to modify this here okay so what I'm gonna do here in JS I will just create uh, I just I just create a function called set path and then I pass the diff inside that set path I haven't created this function yet but what I really what but what it really does is that it just gets this diff value and then replace this zero here with that value as a string, right? Because this is a string, okay? So I'm going back, coming up here, inside my document ready, but outside of my event handlers, I will create a function, set path, and then I'll say, let's call it curve. And then inside that, I know that this is, this is the string that I wanna just operate on. So I'm copying it, and I say return that string right so what it does is that it comes to mouse down and then you know gets that value put it on the start X whenever I clicked and then mouse move whenever I move and then it gets the difference of that right and then using jQuery ATTR function which sets the attribute of the D I create the set path diff passing that diff parameter and basically that is what I return here now what I need to do is simply just create remove this zero just close my string here and then using plus or concatenation operator in JavaScript I create like this right so basically here if I add curve what happens is that whatever value it is it will replace that zero here right and then it just it just changes that and returns the whole string which I can then set on the D attribute right so now if I start dragging it you will see what happens see that's exactly what happens when I drag and then I drag here drag here and that's about it now I need to do some changes right because first of all when I drag I don't want it to you know when I move the mouse you know to the most extreme I don't want the curve to actually come all the way here so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna check if my diff value is less than zero and that's when I move backwards right if it's less than zero 
just set the div div to zero, right? Because everything less, I don't care. I just want the menu to just be like this when I move back here. But this is the direction that I'm carrying. So if the div is less than zero, set the div to zero. Else, if div is more than 300, right? I want the div to be 300. So anything more than 300, I just cap it to 300. So if it becomes 400, 500, you know, 600, I don't care. I just want it to be at most 300. Now if I move it, you'll see that after a while, if I move back, it doesn't change the value, right? And that's exactly what I want. Maybe if I change it to 200, let's just change it to 200. You're gonna see that after 200, regardless of how much I move to the east direction, that doesn't change. And that's what exactly what I want. And then if I go minus, you'll see that that value will become zero. It doesn't affect my menu because that's what I don't care really. I just want it to, whenever I pass this on the negative axis, I want it to be exactly what it was in the default, <clears throat> you know, default shape, which was the menu itself before it starts, right? So that's pretty much what I wanted to do by passing maybe what I need to also do it's it's all up to you I'm gonna just create a curve variable and say diff divided by 2 right so what I do here is that and then pass that instead of diff so I create a curve which is half of diff so if I do this you'll see that it's kind of has having this nice dragging effect right so that's pretty much it maybe Getting back to 300, it looks better. So basically this is how you can add the interactivity and create this drag and, but the problem is that now if I let go of my mouse, it's still working, right? It's still doing, that's not what I want to do. What I really want to do, the intention of this tutorial series is that when I drag and then I let the mouse go, it should animate all the way in the open position of the menu. But right now it doesn't work. So in this tutorial, what I'm gonna do is that outside of the mouse down handler, which is here, right? What I'm gonna do is that I will say document dot on mouse up, and then I pass it a function. And then what I really want to do is that I want to disable the mouse move event handler, right? So what I'm going to do in jQuery is pretty easy, document dot off and then mouse, mouse move, right? Basically off disables that event handler that I created. So now if I drag and let it go, let the mouse go, it will stick over there, right? And that's what exactly I wanted to do. So going back again, for those of you who know JavaScript pretty well, you understood what I did. But for those of you who are new with JavaScript, uh, I want to let you know that you need to have the basic knowledge of computer science, which is functions, you know, how you define variables and how you define methods and objects and stuff. But that's something that you need to do beforehand for these tutorials. But in general, what I did is that I used jQuery functions. So starting from here, when the document is ready, I'll, I, I want this to do these kind of things. And what I do is that I use jQuery selectors to select this element, right, my menu. I gave it a class menu, and then here I just selected it and put it in the variable menu, right? And then I created an event handler, right? Mm -hmm or an event listener. So on the document object, adding an event uh, event handler, mouse down, and then I kind of filter, I basically defined the area that this event handler needs to operate by the second uh, argument here, which is my dot menu, which refers to this, right? And that is pretty much my menu. So basically what happens, and then I pass the function here, I using e, dot page x, I got the x position of when I click and click but not letting go of the mouse, right? And then I created a new, inside that I created a new event handler, document dot on mouse move, 
which is pretty much this mouse move that I want to create, right? And then I got the position of whenever my mouse is, right? And then I basically subtracted the start X from that value, which gives me the difference between the starting position and wherever I am, right? And then I basically capped it. If it's going to the negative direction, I want it to be zero. I don't want it to affect this curvature. But if it's like, and also if it's more than 300 using if else conditional statements, I set the div to 300 because I don't want it to follow all the way right out of out of the screen. So I just basically said if it's more than 300, I just set it to 300. And then I define the variable curve because that's the representative of this. And then I divided that value by 2. And this is something that I just you know tried and it looked good you can divide it by whatever you want you can leave it 300 or whatever the value diff is and then I use the ATTR function of jQuery on my menu right and I set that variable whenever this move happens right and that's why when I drag it kind of creates that difference and then pass that to this new function that I created right because I need to set this D and basically I need to change this zero to whatever curve value that those differences of mouse placements you know represent and then basically I copied this paste it here I basically return that in this function and then basically removed after a that zero with the curve value that I pass and then another click handler on mouse up so whenever you release the mouse you want the event handler to stop working, right? And that's what exactly happens. When I drag and then I let go here, then whenever I move my mouse, that would, wouldn't affect the curvature. In the next tutorial, I'm going to basically create the animation, the cool animation that you can see over here. So basically, manually drag and let it go. So it creates this cool animation. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you had any questions, please Put it in the description, or sorry, put it in the comment, and I will answer that. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And yeah, stay tuned for the next tutorial. It's going to be pretty amazing. Have a good day and night. Bye.